The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Psalm 128 verse 1, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in His ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. Thou shalt eat the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. The Lord help me this morning. I want to preach on this thought. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. This is noted as one of the songs of degrees. The songs of degrees consist of 15 psalms, beginning with Psalm number 120 and concluding with Psalm number 134. When we look at that word degrees, it implies the thought of stepping or walking to an upward place or an upward position. As you look at these 15 songs of degrees, there is a gradual ascension from a low place to a high place. It is said that after the Babylonian captivity, as each Jewish male would commute to the city of Jerusalem to partake in the solemn feast, they would be singing these 15 songs of degrees, 15 psalms of ascension. Now as you and I, as New Testament believers, as we read these 15 songs of degrees, we must understand that there is a picture of spiritual growth and development. For in each one of these 15 psalms, they convey a different principle that when applied to our life, it aids us in our walk and our spiritual growth. That should be the desire of every born-again believer is to grow and mature in the things of God. As my pastor states oftentimes that when God saved us, He didn't save us to sit, soak, and sour, uh, uh, but He saved us to do something for His honor and His glory. That we should never get over our salvation. We should never get over what God has done for us, but we should should get on with our salvation and be the Christian that God desires for us to be. But when you look at these 15 songs of degrees in their totality, even though they are individually written and they convey a different principle in each psalm, they are joined together by the Holy Spirit in the Word of God. And looking at the totality of these 15 psalms, uh, there is a journey that we follow from a low place to a high place. The journey begins, of course, in Psalm 120. There the psalmist is in a very low place. He's not satisfied to where he is. He is sick of where he is, and he makes up his mind that he's going to grow. And each one of these psalms, uh, they are stepping stones, uh, stair steps, climbing upward. By the time we come to Psalm 134, he's praising God in the house of God. Hey, if we'll be honest with ourselves, there's not a one of us that have always been what God intended for us to be. But aren't you glad that he's still working on me to make me what I ought to be? So when we look at these 15 songs of degrees, they are stair steps stepping upward towards spiritual growth. The psalm that is before us this morning and psalm number 128, this is a psalm that deals with the subject of the fear of the Lord. 
How many of you would agree this morning that America does not fear God the way she one time did? How many of you would agree uh, that our churches no longer fear God the way they one time did? As we look at uh, uh, this psalm and we think about the subject of the fear of God, there is a, a misconceived idea amongst my generation and those under me of what the fear of the Lord is. Many young people feel as if that God is in heaven and when you stump your toes spiritually, he's going to blow you off into hell and they say perhaps that is the fear of God. That's contrary to the teaching of God's Word, that the fear of the Lord is living with a reverence. It is living with a respect toward God that He is thrice holy and we will one day stand before Him and give an account for every deed done, good or bad. Living in the fear of the Lord is living with that awareness that God is watching every move that we make and we will stand before him and give an account living in the fear of the Lord is loving what God loves and, and hating what God hates if we truly feared the Lord it would truly change everything about our life it would change how we treat each other and our family how we would live how we would serve if we truly feared the Lord but as we look at uh, this psalm, this is a psalm that is uh, speaking about not just the fear of the Lord, but the blessing upon an individual that fears God. Now, when it comes to salvation, there's not a one of you that is more saved than another of you. The ground is level at the cross. If you're saved, you're saved. Amen right there. But when it comes to the fear of the Lord, it is incremental. And what I mean by that is that every one of us is on a different level concerning the fear of the Lord. Some of you fear God more. Some of you fear God less. But one thing we can all come to agreement on is we all need to fear the Lord more. Amen to that. So this is a psalm that is speaking about the blessing that is on an individual that fears God. But we'll tighten the scope a little tighter. That Psalm 128 is a psalm that is directed toward the men. How do you know that, preacher? Well, in verse 3, it speaks about his wife. And last time I checked with the Bible, if you got a wife, you're supposed to be a man. Somebody hit me there. Somebody ought to tell our government that. So this is a psalm that is speaking about the favor or the blessing of God upon the man that fears the Lord. Notice in verse 1, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in in his ways. This psalm opens with uh, more of, of a, a generalized proclamation of if you fear me, if you live with that reverence and that respect toward me, if you esteem my word above your own opinions, if you take side with my word against yourself, if you fear me, I'll bless your ways. How many of y'all want the blessing of God on your life? We acquire that by fearing the Lord. We come to verse 2. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands, happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. In verse number 2, he's speaking about blessing the work of one's hands. Of course, at this time, it was an agricultural-based society and culture. And so they depended greatly upon the Lord to bring in the prosperity of the crops. And what God is saying is that when you fear me, uh, I will bless your garden. I'll bless your crops. I'll bless your maters and your taters and everything that you grow. I'll bless the work of your hands. Uh, 
if you fear me. Now, I understand y'all might be city slickers. I don't know. Some of y'all probably grow a garden. We don't live in an agricultural based society. But there's one thing about it, we got to work. We all can't live off welfare. Somebody help me. Somebody's got to pay the bills. And uh, it sure is good uh, to have the smile of God shining on our life when we need that raise or that promotion. When you need your business to be blessed, it sure is good to be in tune with the glory world. And when we fear the Lord and walk in the ways that are pleasing unto the Lord and esteem God above everything else, God has promised to bless the work of our hands. But when we come to verse 3, verse 3 is the, to me, is the heaviest verse in this psalm because it deals exclusively with the home. Notice verse 3, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house, thy children like olive plants round about thy table. Notice this first phrase, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine. This fruitful vine uh, speaks a great deal of prosperity. It speaks a great deal of maturity and growth. Now, I believe you'd agree with me when I say this, that when we get saved by the grace of God, we as an individual, male or female, we have a personal responsibility to grow. We have a personal responsibility to read our Bible and to pray and to be what God wants us to be. Is that not right? But I, the getting married 15 days ago, I've really leading up to that. And even now, I've really tried to saturate myself with the Word because I want to do it right, y'all. There's a lot of marriages that's wound up, busted up in divorce. And you look at the statistics, things don't look good concerning the homes in our nation this morning. And there is a great deal of responsibility that's placed upon a man in the home. And Psalm 128 shines a light on that. That if a man fears the Lord, if a man leads his family in the ways that are pleasing unto the Lord, if the man does his job the way God commissioned him to do it, he provides for his wife a fertile field for her to grow and prosper and achieve a spiritual maturity. But on the contrary, if a man has to get drugged out of bed to come to church, if a man does not care about his family, if a man does not care about the spiritual well-being of his family, and he just doesn't lead the way God said for him to lead, uh, that will be detrimental to the spiritual development of his wife. That when a man fears the Lord, God said he would bless his wife. So all you wives in here, you are to pray that God give your husband an extra dose of the fear of God. All you young ladies that are aspiring to be married, you are to pray for your husband now. But pray God give him a double dose of the fear of God because God blesses the wife when that man fears the Lord. But notice he said, Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Notice he did not say that she would be prosperous or she would be a fruitful vine growing on the top of the house, denoting dominance or leadership over the man. Notice that he did not say that she would be prosperous or a fruitful vine growing in the basement and the man mistreating her and abusing her and being dominant over her. He didn't say that either. But he said that she would be prosperous. She would be a fruitful vine by the sides of her husband. I know it's not popular preaching. I know it's rejected in mainstream society. But God's ways 
always right, y'all. And when you look at what the world's promoting, I say we just stay with the Word and it'll be a whole lot better. God's way's a whole lot better. God's way's a whole lot simpler. And when the man's in tune with God and the lady's in tune with God, God blesses that marriage. But notice what he said. Notice the colon. Thy children, like olive plants, round about thy table. He likens children to olive plants. Very, very interesting study to me. Olive plants are very, very intriguing. When you study olive plants, they are one of the slowest plants in the world to produce fruit. In my research, and what little bit of research my little pea brain can grasp, that an olive plant will not produce fruit until a minimum of the seventh year, sometimes up to the twelfth year. But once they began to produce fruit, they are consistent for a long time. There are olive trees in Israel to this very day that were producing fruit in the days of Christ and they're still producing fruit today. The picture is being painted is this, that when you as parents may look at your children and scratch your head and wonder are they ever going to extend any spiritual fruit? Are they ever going to exemplify any spiritual fruit? Are they ever going to do anything for God? Am I ever going to see any outward fruit in their life? The Word of God is teaching those parents, you be faithful to God, you be true to God, you walk in the fear of the Lord, you lead your family in the ways that's pleasing unto God, it may take your children a while, but sooner than later, they're going to get a hold of God, and God's going to get a hold of them, and long after you're dead and gone, their life's going to be producing spiritual fruit, and it's a direct result of your life fearing the Lord. When we look at these Psalms, it teaches us where we really are. But notice in verse 5, he mentions Jerusalem. Then mention in verse 6, he mentions Israel. Jerusalem is the hometown. Verse 6, Israel is the nation. He's saying, boys, that when you fear me and you lead according to my word, I'll bless your ways, I'll bless your work, I'll bless your wife, I'll bless your children, I'll bless your hometown, and I'll bless your nation. All if you fear me. You know why America has been such a blessed nation? Because over 240 years ago, there was a group of patriots that got together that feared God more than they feared man. And before they signed the Declaration of Independence, for three days they fasted and prayed and read Psalm 35 over and over and over and over again. And they started this little experiment, you might have heard of it, it's called the United States of America. And because they feared God above man, God blessed their ways, God blessed their work, God blessed their wife and their children. He blessed their hometown and He blessed their nation. You know what America needs this morning? It's not another politician. The need of America, it is not another policy that can be changed by another administration. The need of America this morning uh, is not some type of community center. The need of America is not another millionaire or another scientist or another coach or another athlete or another teacher. But what America needs uh, is a generation of young men and young ladies that fear the Lord. And the only hope for America is when the church of the living God has revival. And when we get in tune with heaven and we share the gospel with the lost and dying world around us. That's the only hope. But it begins when we fear the Lord. Father, we love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, we understand that Psalm 128 is just one stepping stone in spiritual growth. But Lord, how we failed you so often. 
Lord, it'd certainly change our life if we truly did fear you. Help us to walk in the fear of the Lord. Help us to love what you love, hate what you hate. Help us, Lord, to reverence you because you are God. And beside you, there is none other. Bless the invitation. Bless the dear men of God. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.